Hi, this is David Mook again from theIT.com. This is our new series titled The Untold Stories. And today we have the untold story of Sam Gishuru, who is the CEO and founder of uh, the Naila. Uh, Sam, before you just even tell us anything about yourself, can you tell us what the Naila is about? Okay, uh, thank you David, I'm glad to be here. Uh, the Naila is Nairobi Incubation Lab. Okay. Uh, what happens at the Naila Lab is uh, we incubate smart ideas. We look for people who are thinking about building businesses and we attract them to our space. Uh, we vet them, we bring them in, we give them skills, we give them knowledge, we give them money, we access them, we give them access to market, we show them how to write a business plan, how to develop a product, and within a period of three to twelve months, you are able to be moved from somebody who just had an idea to somebody who actually has a business. <coughs> so we are about 18 months old, um, so we are a very young company, but we've been able to produce over 10 businesses so far. Okay. We were able to raise about 20 million last year for some of these businesses. So uh, we moved from a very small organization of about you know, two or three people just trying to figure out an idea to a pretty big organization. Today. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so I know something about your past. Yeah. I know you have had a really long story before you got to be a CEO. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the part where you were doing toilets and, and blocking things. <laughs> Uh, well, I've, I've had some pretty humbling experiences in my life. <laughs> I grew up in a poor family, uh, Ongatarongai. Uh, we've talked about this before, and Ongatarongai is a meme of internet jokes nowadays. People know Ongatarongai. Do you, do you need a visa to come <laughs> back? To <laughs> to I needed a visa, and maybe my, my visa expires at a certain point. Yeah. I don't live in Rongai anymore, but my parents are there, and my family is there, and it's where I grew up. I went to Ongatarongai Primary School, I mean, which basically means that's my hood. Now, they are growing in that neighborhood, there was not much of ambition or anything. So, finished primary school, finished high school, very poor, sleep hungry a number of times. Uh, my first job was the sewage exhaust. This was the most convenient job that was available that I got. Okay. Of course, before then, I had done Jengos, you know, you know, Korogas, I had done, worked with fundis, I had worked in a shop. Uh, so, high school comes out, I go and I start becoming a makanga for this. There's a tractor and a tanker. So, I'm the, ca I'm the guy who hangs behind the tanker and goes and First of all, I have to get the machine out, put it on the ground, tie the pipes and put them in the toilet, la the latrines or the, sew or the sewages, huh? pump the, the toilet into the, the sewage into the tank, then disconnect the machine and then have the driver drive it to where we are supposed to dispose it off. I go back and open the tank and it pours out and we do that a couple of times. And I'm assuming you had a laptop and uh, yeah, 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 some technology. An app. <laughs> <laughs> I was working with an app, I did not have an iPhone. So what happens is that uh, one of the trickiest things about unblocking toilets is that when the, the people throw nylons and people throw, I mean, a lot of things, I mean, people throw things in the toilet. So when it's pulled, it blocks the machine. So we didn't have gloves. I mean, I, I, our boss did not bother investing in that. So you have to open it your arms and unblock it. You need it. to see your boss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this is the other thing. I'll teach you something today. I mean, if you're going to unblock a toilet, this has got a lot of nylons. So you take a very long pole, you do misumaris at the end, you do some nails at the end, then you throw it inside, and then it's like your you start it and then it catches all the papers and then you pull it out with a lot of papers and a lot of nylons and then on the side you remove the nylons and the papers and you do, do, do that again until a lot of the papers are gone. Okay. I'm not sure I'm looking to go I can assure you at the age of 19 I am so sure I did pull in a, a fetus and I panicked because it, somebody had a bottle of fetus and it, so it was very traumatizing but at the same time I, it fell back and I remember panicking and thinking I don't want to do that I think I just saw a baby there but I wasn't so sure was a baby, of course. I mean, um, but that was my first job. I worked that for six months, raised enough money. I couldn't go to university because I had two sisters to bring up. I mean, my parents needed to pay school fees for these two young girls who were in high school. And I went to a computer college. I fell in love with computers. By the time I was done within the first year, I was pretty proficient with, in, in using computers. I mean, I was doing Windows 3.1 and Lotus Notes 1 to 3, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, but uh, let's, let's go back to now. I really form it actually, because yes. uh, yeah, I think you sound, your story sounds very unrealistic. <laughs> uh, where do you go to primary school? Yeah. What, I mean, the, the school, the school school story. Just, my mother was a teacher, she's still the principal of Ngatarungai Primary School. Okay. So that was the school that I went to. It was extremely, I was an A student in primary school. 
uh, which was pretty encouraging for me. Uh, in high school, I went to Matasia. It's called Eno Matasia. Uh, it's in Matasia, and that's where I went to high school. Okay. And uh, that was four years. It was during times of tribal clashes. So it was really, really tricky being Kikuyu and Masai. There was a little bit of that back then. And I remember being in a Masai school. It was very tricky. But I made very good friends, and I learned that I had very good social skills. So straight from high school to sewage exhaust. Okay. Straight from sewage exhaust to Kenya Christian Industrial Training Institute. That's KCT. KCT. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I didn't go to which, university. Which year was this? Uh, I cleared KCT in 98. Okay. Yes. It was the year of 98 because I cleared school in 96 and 98 is when I went to KCT. So, of course, this is a kid who's. I remember I keep on giving people stories when I do motivational talks. In Form 3, I had one pair of underwear for a whole year. Okay. So, that, 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 so I tell people this is coming from the far. number grew. <laughs> Hopefully the numbers grow today. But you can imagine at that given period of time and how poor you are and your self-esteem at that point in high school, how slow it is, you know, because you know you don't change much. So uh, now after maybe go after now high school and basically say after after my first uh, after after I go through this image, I get money, I build this small shop for myself. It used to be bent like this, so I built it in the same compound with my parents. Okay. And water would flood in, so I'd never ever I'd, I'd sleep with my shoes on the bed, you know, because we trains. <laughs> <laughs> the wind, things were hard. We trains, and that means the shoes are wet tomorrow. I can go to college, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I remember I couldn't buy a suit because Matarone was still dangerous even back then. Uh, let's fast forward. So uh, from KCT, I got my first job at Insight Technologies. Okay. Insight was an ISP. And I remember the second month in Insight, I made so many sales. I was one. I was the best salesperson in the whole company. And the MD wanted to see me. Uh, six months later, there was an opening for a sales manager position, which I applied in six months, and I got it. Okay. Uh, it was very, very exciting. Um, then I moved to Wananchi Online. So I worked for Insight for uh, for Wananchi for about two years, and I left. I started my own business. It was called Cipher Systems Limited. And uh, Cipher Systems was a good company. Uh, I went on and I got married. And I went for my honeymoon. And that was my first experience with business because two weeks after my honeymoon, I came back, my company crashed. <laughs> it just happens that when you have a business, it's a kiosk if you go and nobody else is there to run it as good as you. That was the first lesson in finding better co founders to run my business with and hiring the right people. That was my first lesson. Because when I went, I came back, my clients, you know, their payroll system had been crashed and nobody was there to repair some of them, so they. You know, they moved to another oh, person. Yeah. You know, it was just two weeks. So you can imagine those two weeks. Everything just went, went just everything went to the dogs, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my staff members, my key staff member, moved to KQ. So basically, there was nobody to support these customers, and I had to close the office. I remember and move and work for my apartment. And I worked for my apartment for a year. Okay. And I opened a web hosting company called Ideas Africa. It's been running up to date. We have hundreds of customers we service at IdeasAfrica.com. Uh, now, Ideas Africa has run for years. Uh, it's been running for years. I built a big team. We were able to move now from maintenance of computers because that was not a sustainable business anymore. Mm -hmm. Of course, the other lesson I learned is that you need to build a business that provides recurring revenue. And that's what we're hosting is. Customers pay you on a month-to-month -month basis. So whether you're on honeymoon or not, somebody's still writing you a check. Yeah. And it doesn't require a lot of support. So that was really, that was a big lesson in business. So I've run Ideas Africa for 10 years almost 10 years, because I'm between the age of 24, they are to 5 to now. Uh, and uh, along the way, I learned another big lesson, is that trying to do business in Kenya is extremely hard for any young person. Mm, why, why do you say extremely hard? I've seen some very young a uh, successful people, people who are very successful. Um, At this particular hard. point, you can get to be successful in the young because people are paying attention to young people. After Larry and Page of Google, after Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey of Twitter and Facebook, after these people build these companies, people have a faith in young people. Back then, as a young person, nobody trusted that they could write you a hundred thousand worth of a check, mm -hmm. and you're not going to go and buy a motorbike or a car and disappear. You know, deliver the service. So there was a lot more sales process going into place. The bank would not give me money to buy my first car. I bought it cash because I was not credible. I had not been banking very well. Okay. I mean, uh, so those are the challenges. And the other thing is that um, also as a young person, when you start becoming a boss. You, you know, you have nobody to mentor you, so you are over the edge. You know, you feel like boss. You grow an ego. You grow an ego, and you dis and people, you, you push people away, and, and that's hard. So it was really hard. Okay, um, the Nyla, uh, you've, you've developed talent. You've developed uh, 
people from just having ideas to you know actually doing something with their ideas. Um, what is the, 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 the power that drives you to help other people? Because I view it as helping other people achieve their dreams. Now, what is the drive between helping people move from where they are to where they are going? It's basically my story all over again. Okay. If I can cut my story short for somebody, it makes it work. Great. They don't have to go through the same path I went through. I, they have a mentor, they have a coach, they have somebody they can talk to, and they can, this person can help them walk through business. Okay, and, and what are some of the businesses that you can say you assisted from from an idea to an actual business? Uh, you would notice a couple of businesses that you actually know about. One is my order that helps people order things using their mobile phones. This company has become quite big in a very short period of time. Uh, when I met some people, he was just, we met at a gate downstairs and for long, he's now a CTO of a company that has hired about seven people. Uh, there is Emprep that helps people uh, do SMS uh, preps using their phone. Studies. Studies. Well, preps in the evening. And uh, between, uh, I mean, they have been able to raise a substantial amount of money. We're able to help them, coach them, and mentor them. But they work very hard with their own as well to achieve where they've been. There's Taskies, which is, uh, again, an SMS gateway that's for schools. Uh, and all these guys have raised money, nothing less than 3 million children. That just goes to show how viable their business ideas are. Uh, I could pick one or two others, uh, and uh, I mean, you call, which is run by Kate, uh, and he, she's developed a software for security guards. You know, I mean, when she came in, she didn't have as much revenues. Now she has quite a number of revenues, and she has a big staff member working for her. So yes, we've been able to. Uh, there was a visual as well, uh, who were doing animation, and they came in. In the first three months, we were able to raise three million shillings in revenue, direct revenue, not funding. Yeah, you know, from multimedia business. So, uh, and that was about last uh, early this year. Uh, so we are yeah, we are 18 months old. So, okay, and what's what's the process of uh, my business being incubated? Uh, for for people out there with ideas that want to come to Naira, the first thing is you apply online. Okay. You're selected based on how viable your idea online is. Online is where? On our website, okay. www.naira.co.ke. Okay. We select you based on viability of your idea. You know, from the application, we're able to tell how smart you are, we're able to tell how well you think, we're able to tell whether you can pull this through or not. Then after that, uh, you come for what you call a hackathon or boot camp. For 24 hours, you work on your idea and present it the next day. It's very exciting. It's a 24 hour session. You don't leave food and everything else is provided. And you work. From there, you're selected. The top 10 companies are selected and they report the next Monday. Now, when they report to Nylab, Nylab is a beautiful space. So you come, you have a desk where you can, you will sit and work from, you have coffee, you have got games you can play when you're bored, but sit there, work there, go home, come back, just, you have access to the space 24 hours when you want it. Now, for the next three months, it's less work on your product. And then the next three months after that, let's work on your business plan and, you know, beta test your product. Then let's start raising money for you after the six months. And from there now, you're able to exit and find yourself a small office space in town, and now you've already gained mileage. Not to mention mentors, coaches, you meet all the kind of people, CEOs, all types of CEOs across the country, across the world, you visit us, you will meet them in the industry. Okay, and, and just in conclusion, what's the one lesson about your life, your business, everything that you want to share with our audience? Uh, there have been a lot of hopeless moments in my life. Moments when you pull into a and moments when you know, and, uh, the machine opens up and the toilet flies all over the place and you get discouraged. I mean, hope. Hope is what makes you wake up in the morning. When you have hope and you just hold on to hope as well, you wake up in the morning and you go to bed. It doesn't matter what happens, always hope for the best because I don't think a kid from Ungata Rungai ever imagined that he would have traveled the world by the time he was 34. And, um, so whatever it is you're out there, I'll discourage whatever. Hold on to the hope that something will be coming for you. That's okay, it. great. So you heard it. This is Sam Nye, Sam Gishuru, uh, uh, the CEO and founder of Nylab. And his story is quite inspiring. I'm sure you picked up the details. And we shall be seeing you. Thank you.